I don't know if you know this or not, but that is the sound of victory. This is the transmission module. It contains relays and fuses. These connectors here and here will connect to the transmission electronic control unit. You say, where is that? Well, it's right there because I pulled it out already. The ECU for the transmission goes here on this 01 Coachman Sports Coach. The transmission module, as it's called, goes here. It's a diesel, 5.9 Cummins. Uh, it would not crank, would not turn over, that is. And I have been troubleshooting now for seven days. And I have come to this point. I have come to the point where the green connector on the transmission module, if you recall, it's that thing. This pin right here on the corner had a low voltage with high resistance. Guess what it feeds? These two pins here and here, these two pink wires. These two pink wires there and there, okay? Guess where they go? They go here. They go to pins one on this corner and 16 on this corner. This is the gray connector, which goes into the transmission ECU, electronic control unit. All right, I think I'm on the cusp of getting this RV back into service. But I will leave you here, and the next thing you're going to see is the beginning of our troubleshooting process, where we started at the ignition switch. All right, so this is a standard part. You can get this down at Napa. I'll put the part number in the description below. Sometimes your ignition switch can go bad. In this case, it did not. I replaced this and it did not correct the issue. So in order to uh, just give you a quick uh, tutorial on how to replace this ignition switch, you see that little hole right there? That's gonna be your friend. So what you're gonna get is a good stout paper clip, right? One of those large ones. Now, you're gonna put the key, this is before you take it out of the dash, clearly. You're gonna put the key in the back accessory position. So that would, that would be to the left of the off position. Uh, remember, this is old school stuff, so if you're used to driving modern vehicles, uh, this will be a lesson for you. So, put the key in the back accessory position. Take your good stiff paper clip and insert it into that tiny little hole, and you will feel a spring-loaded release. You can feel the tension on it. While keeping tension on the spring-loaded release, turn the key to the left again. It will turn slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little less. I'm not sure what the distance is, but it's a short, it's a very short uh, bit. So turn it slightly to the left. You'll hear it kind of click. At that point, the lock cylinder is in the right channel to be pulled away from um, the lock itself. The, uh, the key won't come out. You can grab a hold of it with your fingers and pull it out while keeping tension on the release with the paper clip, okay? It may, you may have to tug on it. You may have to wiggle it back and forth. You may have to do it, you know, half a dozen times. Mine was pretty tricky. It was old and worn out and it took me a while to get it out of there, but just keep fiddling with it. You'll get it. All right, so, and there's also a uh, chrome bezel. Now, once you get the lock cylinder out, there's a chrome bezel here. It's got some notches on it. You put a screwdriver on it and zip and just turn it out of there. And you can pull this downward and, and out, and uh, then you can replace it or do whatever you need to do with it. All right, so that's the ignition switch. Now, while it was up here, I decided to check each and every fuse and relay, regardless of its function. Of course, I did all of the ones that said something to do with ignition first, so uh, it for this RV, most of the relays and fuses are in this little cubby hole. You want to check anything that's related to ignition or neutral or transmission, things like that. That's what you want to look for uh, in a no start situation. But in this case, all of my fuses and relays were good. And that leads us to our next stop on our no crank troubleshooting fiasco. The starter relay. All right, so here we are at the back of the coach right underneath the starter relay 
and it is right near the starter okay so your starter solenoid is there the starter motor is there the starter relay is here now when you turn your key on a 12 volt signal is supposed to come here to engage this relay to allow battery voltage from this terminal it will click over and that voltage will go to this wire and this wire goes to the starter solenoid right there and engages this solenoid and makes the starter motor crank the engine however anytime we tried to crank the engine there was no 12 volt signal at this terminal I tried to run a tone test from this wire all the way back to the front of the RV and trust me I went all the way underneath this RV from head to toe okay and I could not find a physical connection between this wire and the ignition switch so that left me with a serious question I had to do more research and that led me to the next location so I disconnected that 12 volt wire at the starter relay and hooked up my tone generator and I got busy with my tone tracer tool and it led me to the engine bay here with the 24 valve Cummins and again here's the VDC not re relevant to this project however the next two boxes are this is the transmission ECU in other words the computer that controls the transmission and this is a power distribution box it just simply contains relays and a couple of fuses okay when i toned out that wire at the starter relay it toned out to one of these wires and this connector right here all right so where does that leave us i decided to do a little more research and i contacted uh justanswer.com yeah you heard me right i decided to contact those folks and believe it or not they're pretty good uh, that put me in contact with an RV mechanic, I believe his name was Bill, and he provided me with what's called a, a WTEC 2 troubleshooting guide. Now, WTEC 2 is, the, is not the right uh, transmission controller for this vehicle. Uh, come to find out, I had a WTEC 3 based on how my uh, based on the looks of my uh, my ECU on this on this RV. So after searching around online, I found the uh, WTEC 3. Uh, troubleshooting document. I also purchased a full-blown Freightliner XC uh, recreational chassis workshop manual. With all of this documentation in hand, we were able to finally troubleshoot our problem correctly. After doing some reading, I found in the troubleshooting section of the workshop manual, there's a line item for the ve for vehicle not cranking. And it says to check the voltage to the ECU. It may be too low. Aha, uh -huh. well. All right, so at this moment, I'd like to take a little bit of a time and uh, provide you with some information that I think that might be useful to you. Um, if you take a look at transmissioninstruments.com, these folks do rebuild services of the uh, transmission control modules for these Allison transmissions and these RVs and other big trucks. If you look at the troubleshooting section on their website, uh, mine is a WTEC 3, so that's where I went. And here is a section governing the troubleshooting process for WTEC 3. Now, if you read down through this document, you'll see some very simple testing methods uh, using uh, a, a simple light bulb from a, from a brake tail light and it shows the proper pins to check voltages and to check for illumination of the light. This is, uh, these are the two pins in question here showing that the power is there, uh, lighting the light bulb. And they provide you with the information about which pins do what. Number 17 and number 32 are ground. Number 1 and number 16 are battery. Number 26 uh, on the gray connector or number 4 on the black connector is ignition. Uh, and you can... It, Anyway, some very detailed instructions on in here about how to troubleshoot uh, a, a low or no power situation at your uh, transmission ECU. So where does the voltage come into the ECU? It comes in on pins 1 and 16 of this gray connector right here. After taking this connector off, inserting a small pin into each one of those connectors, 
I was able to determine that there was no battery voltage going to the ECU. At this point, that was huge. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't zero. It was really low. It was around 10 to 11 volts, which is not right. It's supposed to be 12.6. Furthermore, I used a test light on each of those pins, and I could not. It's supposed to be a full-blown 12-volt signal. I could not get a test light to light. So what does that mean? Since the voltage was down a little bit, and it wouldn't light a test light, that means a high resistance connection somewhere. Now, the next thing I did was to, I put a small pin in uh, pin one here on this connector. At, you know, the connector was removed. I put a little pin in it, and it gave me a little something to grab a hold of. And I put my, I put my tone generator on that, and I used my tone tracer to go all the way through this mess here. And I traced this tone down and around, crawling around underneath the RV again, and it took us back over to a familiar location, which is right over here. All right, here we are again. You may recall this is the starter relay from earlier in the video. Right next to it is a power distribution bus bar. 12 volts come in, comes in from the battery right here and comes through this connector. Uh, and is distributed to this lead, which I don't know where it goes. But this lead, I know where it goes, but the, because that's where my tone tracer led me to. I took all of these, now when I first looked at this, it was very rusty, it was very corroded. I took all of these connections off, and I found a lot of that green corrosion under them. I cleaned everything out, I tapped the threads on all these connectors, and I reconnected everything, and put antioxidant all over it. And when I was done, I got a really nice, strong 12 volt signal. Before I did that cleaning, however, though, I did an impedance check from this bolt all the way back up to that uh, power lead at the ECU. You would normally expect that to be zero ohms, right? It was not, it was around three or four ohms, which told me that this was a, very, this was a high resistance connection right here. So once I got that cleaned up, I uh, my ohm, I ohmed out this again. It went to zero ohms, which was fantastic. It had good clean power, 12.6 volts here. And I went back up to the ECU and checked voltages up there, and I got 12.6 volts up there. Boom, we're back in business. And we got in the driver's seat and we cut our ignition to the on position. Boom! We got illumination on the shifter pad, folks. And with one quick turn. Our 5.9 Cummins zooms into life. All right, so where does that leave us? What are the possible causes of a no crank situation on your diesel pusher? It could be the ignition switch, which it wasn't in this case. It could be a bad relay or a bad fuse, which it wasn't in this case. It could be a bad starter relay, which is near the starter. You need to check it. Check the starter relay. Did you hear me? Check it, okay? But it wasn't in this case. It was the power feeding the transmission ECU. If your transmission ECU does not get power, you're not going anywhere. So we cleaned that up and we fixed our issue and we're all back to normal now. All right, folks, pardon the uh, buzzer there while our air comes up to pressure. Appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one and remember to enjoy driving your classic motorhome.